Welcome to part four of playing breakout with a deep reinforcement learning. Today we are going to start working on our agent class, um, or more specifically, the replay buffer that the agent class is going to end up using. So I'm going to create a new file here, and we're just going to call it agent. And we're going to need two classes in here. Um, the first is replay memory and I'm just going to put a pass there so it doesn't complain and then the second one is going to be agent and the agent is the one who's actually going to be playing um, the game and replay memory is basically going to be the agent's uh, memory so the way Q learning works or at least the way deep Q learning works, it's going to build a buffer over time of all of the state action pairs that it's played. Um, it's going to pick up the state, the action, the next state, and the reward of, of every play. And then it's going to use that to train the model to approximate the Q value. So this is basically um, a way for the agent to remember you know, X number of games um, and then to be able to replay that back in training. So it is a core uh, critical part to our uh, reinforcement learning model and we're going to go ahead and code that out right now. So as usual, we're going to oh, not int, init is what we want there. And we're going to take a capacity and we're going to take a device um, and I'm just going to default that to the CPU. We'll pass in GPU when we're ready um, and then we're going to say self.capacity equals capacity. We're going to say self.memory equals and for now this is just going to be a blank list. Self.position, we're going to use that later. Self.device is of course device and self.memory max report equals zero. So there are a few different ways to manage um, making sure memory doesn't go over a constant size. I've seen people reference uh, specific indexes. I've seen people um, do you know, a NumPy array that's that's only that size and then you know, start overwriting from the beginning. The way we're going to handle it uh, is to me a little bit simpler. You may like it, you may not. Um, we're going to have our insert method and it's going to take self and transition. Um, and the transition is just the, the data unit at play here. So it's, you know, that transition is going to be a, a tuple of all of the, you know, state um, action, reward, next state that goes in. Um, so this is, you can think of this as a tuple. Um, we're going to say transition equals, and there's no great way to do this as a, um, you know, just like a dot two, but we're going to say item dot two CPU. We're going to do it as a list comprehension for item in transition. So why are we doing this? Um, we, again, there's a couple of different ways you can handle it. This replay memory can get very, very large. Um, in training, I've had this thing get up to, you know, 20 gigs of RAM with a million images in it. Um, if, unless you have a, a very large GPU, something like a 3090 or a 4090 or you know one of the you know one of the professional grade ones which I don't you're probably going to run out of GPU memory and it's going to crash um, and this this threw me for a little while because I you know was training my model training 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 everything was great and then it would crash out and say it it you know didn't have enough memory um, and that didn't make a lot of sense so I finally figured out I was pushing everything to the GPU and it was running out of GPU memory. So the way I got around that was to um, store everything about replay memory 
on on the CPU, which pushes that to your your computer's main um, bank of RAM. And then when it's time to pick up those transitions, at that point on the on the sample method we're going to be adding, then we we push them back to device, which will be GPU when this is actually running. So with that in mind, so we're we're pushing, we've taken our transition, we're pushing it to the CPU, and then this is where we're going to say if len self.memory is less than self.capacity, then just do self.memory.append transition, simple enough. Else, so if uh, if memory is not less than self.capacity, then we're going to do self.memory.remove and self.memory.no dot self.memory zero. So and then we can do self.memory.append transition. So if we're not over our capacity, we append. If we are over our capacity, we remove the first item in the list, and then we append. And that should keep everything um, under our million or whatever we, uh, we decide to make our memory. Uh, my, the number I found worked pretty well was a million. I'm going to bump that down to line up with Python. Oh, it doesn't like me bumping it down in the style guide. All right, um, next up, we need a way to sample our memory. So I'm going to say sample and self and batch size. So how big of a batch of um, data do you want to sample? I'm gonna set a default of 32. Even if we don't use them in this code, I like to set defaults because it helps me remember you know, later on what a, uh, what a good normal number for these values is. You know, 32 has been a very successful batch size. I might play with it a little bit from project to project, um, but I, I can always come back and see that my default was 32. So I'm going to start with assert self.can sample batch size, and we'll talk about what that is a little while from now. Um, and then I'm going to say batch equals random dot sample of self dot memory of batch size. So that's going to take a random uh, a random sample of transitions from self dot memory of size batch size. We're going to say batch equals zip start dot batch not dot, just star batch. And then we're going to return. And this is where the, um, you know, pushing it back to the GPU comes in. So we're going to say torch dot cat items dot two self dot device. Four items in batch. And it's telling me I don't have torch, so let's come up here and import torch. I'm sure we'll have other things we need as we go. Um, and again, if you have you know a massive GPU you're training on, or maybe you're training on a, a cloud cluster somewhere, um, this may be unnecessary. This will slow down your training just a little bit. Um, so it is actually better for speed if you have the hardware to just let everything sit on the GPU and run. Um, but if you are you know, playing in a lab environment or a, a more limited situation, you probably want um, to do something like what I'm doing here. So finally, uh, we're going to finish it out and do a couple of things here. We're gonna say def can sample. So why are we doing this? We want to be able in our code later to ask the ask the memory object if we can sample from it, if there's enough data here. Um, obviously, if you come in and pull a batch of 32 and there's only one transition, um, it's, it's not going to 
do very well. Um, equally, you probably want more than 32, otherwise you're going to be training from just one batch size. You want a, a larger sample before you start training. So uh, this is somewhat arbitrary, but what I picked was um, len of self.memory is greater than or equal to batch size times 10. So couple things here. One, I'm soft coding. You know, we're not setting a default if it's over 500. We're saying, you know, for a batch size of, of whatever batch size is, um, multiply it by 10. And as long as we're, you know, greater than or equal to, um, you know, batch size times 10, then sure, go ahead and, you know, go ahead and sample. Um, so that should work there. Um, and then finally, we can say we're also going to define len because we may, we may need to be able to pull that um, length later. So also let's talk about this one for a minute. Why do I need to explicitly define a len object? So out of the box, if I just called um, replay memory, and then ask it for its length, it's probably going to give me some kind of, you know, object readout. It's not going to understand that what I really want is the number of items in memory. Um, so by overriding the len here, I can basically allow other things to call, you know, the, the len method and pull back what I actually want which is the length of self.memory. Um, and actually, let's see, sample, yep. All this looks like what we want it to. So uh, this is probably a good breaking point. I'm gonna end this video here and we will start the next video coding out the agent class.